from Ravel's Sonata in G for Violin and Piano, performed by violinist Johan Dahliner and pianist Christian Ila Hadland. And Johan Dahliner is our guest on the Gramophone podcast this week as he joins me, editor Martin Cullingford, to discuss his wonderful new album from the BIS label called Stained Glass. This week's podcast is brought to you in association with Wigmore Hall, where in the coming week you can hear two concerts from the Tokash Quartet, performing works by composers including Beethoven, Bartok, Haydn and Huff, Pianist Richard Good playing Bach, Chopin and Foy, violinist Ning Feng with Paganini and Isai, and the Dunedin consort taking to the famed stage alongside the vile consort Phantasm. For a full list of concerts, visit wigmore-hall.org.uk. Johan Dahliner, the Swedish violinist, is a former Gramophone Young Artist of the Year and the recipient of editor's choices for the concertos of Nilsson and Sibelius and for his previous album with Christian Ila Hadland, Nordic Rhapsody. To talk about his new release, I met up with him at Henrywood Hall where he was rehearsing with the London Philharmonic Orchestra. So if you notice the music in the background, it's the LPO that you can hear. Johan Dahliner, welcome to the Gramophone Podcast. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Now, I think a nice way to approach this would be to explore the works on this recording one by one. So without going into too much depth, perhaps you can begin with an introduction to the concept of the album, which is, I have to say, a fascinating, wide ranging and needless to say, beautifully performed programme. Thank you so much. No, so, I mean, basically, I didn't really think of a theme when I when I chose the pieces. I mean, you could say that there's a sort of theme with, you know, it's mostly like uh, early 20th century music um, and also later 20th century music, but uh, mostly around that sort of same time. Um, and uh, it's a lot of like impressionistic, uh, also neoclassical works were inspired by, by that. And uh, uh, but, but mostly I would say it's just music that I, that I love and that I played quite a lot. And, and uh, uh, of course, I, I wanted it to fit together, but it's. Um, I think Prokofiev and Ravel are probably the two sonatas that I perform most actually. <laughs> but the stained glass is the, that's the name of the of the one of the pieces by Basiewicz. It's mm. uh, Vitras uh, in Polish, and stained glass uh, is the name. And uh, I guess uh, I mean I didn't actually know what stained glass was <laughs> until until I saw that uh, uh, the title for that piece. But I guess you could also say that it's sort of, um, it's like a color palette of, of each uh, piece on the album as well. Um, that is like sort of the same, but different colors uh, or inspired by the same uh, time, sort of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a beautiful way of, of putting it. Now, the album begins with Fratres by Arvo Pett, written in 1976 for no specific instrumental forces, though this for violin and piano has become a very popular way of yeah. hearing it. It's a set of variations on a chord pattern, sometimes very intensely driven, sometimes very still. What does the work mean to you? I, I absolutely love this this work. It's a bit too hard to in, inter, interpret uh, like uh, the title Fratres, which means brothers. But I think, I mean, Arvo Perti spoke a lot about time and timelessness and, and it feels like you can really hear that in his music. Also, it's very like, this piece is very like mathematically structured. For example, every variation is like a 7, 9, 11, and then 9, 7 bar and, and every single variation. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's the same, you know, theme going, going over and over again. But in, of course, a lot of different ba- ways. And sometimes it's, as you say, like very still, quiet and uh, almost meditative at points and then sometimes it's extremely intense uh, and sometimes it's just warm and, and, and beautiful and it's interesting with this piece I mean it starts I think the beginning is it's so hard to, to, to get good but it, it starts like so soft incredibly soft like it, it comes from nothing and then it also finishes like it, it just fades out sort of and in the middle especially maybe towards the, the end of the, of the middle section is like you know the most intense variations, uh, and yeah, I just I just love uh, this piece. <laughs> And 
And then we move into this the beautiful piano opening of Ravel's violin sonata, though it's one which very quickly becomes sort of quite questioning and more mysterious. <laughs> now, I read in the booklet notes that one of the challenges that intrigued Ravel was the basic incompatibility of the two instruments, yeah. violin and piano, which may be a surprise to those who love the vast repertoire for this combination. <laughs> but what do you take from that? What do you think he meant by that observation? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I guess... Uh, if you think about it, he's, he's right, it's very, I mean, two very different instruments in a lot of ways. And it also feels like, maybe especially in the first movement, uh, it feels like he, rather, rather than like uh, uh, trying to, to avoid that, he sort of highlights highlights it, the incompatibilities. That, uh, I mean, of course, the, the piano has this beautiful theme, and then when the violin enters with the sort of same things in the long notes the piano is dum, 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 like, like it is quiet but it works so so well of course yeah <laughs> yeah and, and then there's that really lovely central section entitled blues which stems from the yes. fact it was written for a friend of Ravel who shared his his love of, of jazz and mm. and it, it's just lovely to hear you sort of step into that idiom and and the playfulness that 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 has oh thank you no it's uh i mean that's uh one of the most fun uh, pieces to play that that middle movement it's very also also hard to 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 get a good feeling in that but it's i feel it helps to just feel like you're making things up in the in the moment or you try to feel like that anyway and so that it feels spontaneous and uh, uh yeah i i don't play jazz at all <laughs> otherwise or anything like that but i i like listening to it but um, it's very nice to play something quite different from, from yeah. what you usually would, would do yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely followed by a shorter piece by Lily Boulanger, how exquisite little nocturne. And there's, yes. a, there's a couple of short pieces on, on here, but this, mm. is, this is a very beautiful one. So tell me when you encountered that and why you've put that, that on here. I encountered it, I think, maybe maybe around 2019 or, or even earlier than, than that. I've, I've played it quite a lot also. I um, usually played it as an encore, actually, <laughs> when, I, when I played recitals. played it quite a lot, and it's... it's very beautiful. It's just uh, you know lovely melodies and uh, um, really sensitive. Yeah, it's just just a lovely, lovely beautiful short piece, and it feels nice to have that in between, in between the sonatas basically. And that that was something that struck me as listening to this when we reached the, this this point. The way you've managed to shape an album. So often albums are just two sonatas or two concertos, and actually you've got the two big bigger pieces by Ravel and Prokofiev, and then you, you put these other pieces in between. It's, it's, yeah. it's a beautifully prepared programme. Thank you so much. No, it was, uh, spoke with some people from BIS, and uh, we, we came up with the idea to sort of let it, I mean, like, like we spoke about Fratres, that it sort of fades in and that it fades out a little bit, um, finishing with, with Vitras, uh, and uh, starting with that beginning of, of Fratres, and then having the, some, some of the intense stuff in the, in the middle. And then we move on to um, Prokofiev's second violin sonata. Now, this work began life as a flute sonata, written at an artist's retreat in 1943. So during the horrors of the Second World War, though to my mind, we perhaps hear a composer here trying to find beauty and lyricism in the shattered world around him. The violinist David Oistrak worked with Prokofiev on an arrangement for the violin, and it certainly feels perfectly embedded into the instrument's sound world. It, it, it plays to both the, the, the extreme ends of what the violin sound can be, but it does feel very rooted in it, in it. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, one can definitely hear that it is a flute sonata from the from the start. I think Prokofiev also described it himself as a sonata, like in a gentle, flowing classical style. I feel especially in the first moment, you can you can hear that it, uh, I mean, it's very elegant, and of course, with that like Prokofiev twist hmm. that it always has. Um, but uh, it's almost, yeah, uh, feels classical, neoclassical, uh, and 
yeah, I think each movement has something totally different to say, which also is what makes it such a compelling sonata, I, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> some really fascinating pieces by Grzegni Bacevic, Tuboreska and then Lullaby, Slavonic Dance and those latter two titles in translation. And here the Polish composer is, is really reaching into and depicting something of the sounds of her country's folk music. Absolutely. I honestly don't know that much about Polish folk music, but uh, you can definitely hear that it has folk music influences and uh, especially maybe the the Slavonic dance and the um, humoresque as well. Uh, it's very groovy and uh, um, dancey sort of. And uh, um, yeah, we, we chose, I, I played the humoresque and the kolisanka a lot before, uh, or not a lot, but a few times, but, but the vitras and the Slavonic dance are, are, they were completely new to me. And I wanted to add, I felt like it was too little with, with two pieces because uh, they're so short. <laughs> And she's, she's written a lot of pieces for violin and piano, actually. I have with the sheet music, there are like, uh, it's, um, it's a, compila- a compilation of, of about maybe 12 pieces or something like that that she's written from different periods, like these pieces as well. But, uh, and I don't think they're supposed to be, uh, or it's not like, uh, yeah, it's obviously not in the same opus or anything like, like that, but uh, uh, it's pieces for violin and piano. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I listened through them, and uh, especially this stained glass one, it uh, sort yeah. of, uh, uh, I thought it was beautiful and uh, very originally written. And uh, yeah. yeah. The stained glass is, is beautiful and perhaps more impressionistic than the three pieces before it. But to mm. my mind, when listening to it, it felt like a real return to the sound world of the Arvo Poet that we began with. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Which I assume was part of the the beautiful planning of the program, but that's yeah. that's how it felt to me as a listener. That's very nice that you that you say that. I, I honestly didn't think too much about it when I when I picked the piece. Or I, di- I didn't think that I was gonna, or know that I was gonna put the parrot and, and that one, you know, first and last. But uh, it it's true. It's it's sort of the same uh, sound and I'm I'm happy you you say that. <laughs> Obviously, must must mention that throughout this, there's this wonderful partnership with Christian Ilair Hadeland, a pianist you've of course worked with before, mm-hmm. to great acclaim in the studio on the beautiful Nordic Rhapsody, and there, there just does feel a very almost instinctive relationship between the, the two of you in terms of your searching, your exploration of this music. Thank you. No, it's uh, so he's uh, yeah an absolutely incredible pianist. I I met him for the first time at the. Uh, a chamber music festival in Norway in Stavanger and it's fun because I my parents or my dad uh, and my grandparents are from around that area uh, very close to Stavanger in Norway um, I'm half Norwegian and Christian uh, is from Stavanger um, so I you know I've of course known for him uh, I probably would even if I didn't have relatives in Stavanger of course but I, I've known about him for for a long time and I've been a fan of his a long time and, and being at that festival where he's artistic director and getting to play with him was really inspiring and uh, uh, yeah I, play, I played with him I was there 2019 and 2020 and especially in 2020 we, we played some stuff together and uh, it yeah feels or has always felt very natural to play with him uh, and he's terrific and uh, actually one of the first thing, things we did together was record the, uh, the Nordic Rhapsody album it was during the COVID year, sort of. We were supposed to do a few concerts before that, but uh, that never happened. So it was quite intense to go just record something together when we played together like twice before. But uh, he's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so amazing to play with him. And uh, uh, I'm sure everyone who plays with him says that, you know, but uh, it feels uh, feels very natural. And it feels like, I mean, it's very nice in those rehearsal situations uh, where you don't have to talk too much. 
I mean, it's, it's nice to discuss the music and, and things like that, but it's also nice that you can just play and understand each other. Um, yeah, and yeah. not have to, you know. <laughs> and often looking at recordings that come out, you see these strong partnerships between a violinist and a pianist, and mm. that, that sort of is a, a constant throughout people's releases and their careers. And sure. it must be nice for you to have found someone with two albums in now we've worked yeah. with him, where, where you've yeah. already got that sense of, 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 of relationship and momentum. I'm super grateful for, I mean, uh, yeah, also that he, that he wanted to join for these projects and super happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, now, obviously, now, by, by now you're building up a, a superb discography of, of orchestral music, concertos and, and solo music. Where, where are your plans next? Are there areas you want to explore, particular composers you want to delve into? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I want to record a lot of music. Uh, one of the, the dreams is to record all Beethoven sonatas, but that's probably going to be sometime along the, uh, along the line. I only played five of them, so I have five left to learn. But I just I just love that music so much. I think it's just uh, so fresh and full of life and uh, spontaneity, and it's just uh, yeah uh, the best. And, and the Brahms sonatas, of course, as well. But I mean, there's so much music that I that I love. But maybe maybe I will say I will say that the next project we're doing is uh, actually going to be a few virtuosic pieces for for violin and piano. So that's going to be interesting also. Mm -hmm. It's nice to play that when you're young. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, yeah. the third part in all of this is, is BIS, the record label, and yeah. they've been very supportive and, and have achieved some really wonderful sound on this, I think. So. Yeah, no, they're, they're, yeah, they're great. And uh, the producers I've, I've uh, had the pleasure to, to work with, I mean, on these few discs that I made, I'm, I'm just so grateful. It's uh, two guys, uh, one Ingo Petri, uh, who's fantastic, and uh, Jens Brown, who's also just... Uh, outstanding and I've actually I've only ever recorded four albums that I did all of them were in Sweden right um, but it's been very convenient I mean with the Swedish label and those two producers living in Sweden as well yeah. uh, but the next one is not going to be in Sweden but uh, yeah <laughs> wonderful well Stained Glass by my guest today violinist Johan Dahlina and pianist Christian Ile Hadland is available now on the BIS label Johan thank you so much for joining me today thank you for having me <laughs> Music by Grazia Basevic, a work titled Humoresque, performed by violinist Johan Dahliner and pianist Christian Ila Hadland, and taken from their new album on BIS called Stained Glass. And my thanks to Johan Dahliner for joining me today. Thank you too to Wigmore Hall for supporting this week's podcast, and for a full list of concerts at the acclaimed London Chamber Music Venue, visit wigmore-hall.org.uk. And thank you for listening to this Gramophone podcast. If you've enjoyed it, we'd be hugely grateful if you could leave a rating or a review, hit the subscribe button, or simply tell your friends about our work. And if you want to explore classical music in even greater depth with Gramophone, then we produce a monthly magazine packed full of interviews, features, and reviews. And all listeners to this podcast can get a 20% discount by visiting gramophone.co.uk forward slash subscribe and entering podcast20 at the checkout. And do join us again for another Gramophone podcast next week.